Good afternoon. It's Friday, the 6th of March, 2015, just after one o'clock. Welcome to UK Column News. I'm your host this afternoon, Brian Gerrish. With me in the studio, Mike Robinson. Afternoon. Behind the technical desk, uh, Nick Green, and uh, we have a mystery guest with us in the studio. Well, the good news is the weather is fine across uh, England and Wales. Uh, we've got good reports in Sunshine, Shropshire, uh, London, um, the northwest in particular looking very good here in Plymouth, blue skies, Cornwall, blue skies, sunshine. Unfortunately, not so good north of the border and uh, a fairly gloomy weather report uh, from around Perth where it's almost non-weather. Overcast, not too cold, not too warm. So causing the Scots a few problems there. If you still haven't read the Daily Telegraph's scientific analysis on global warming, and what's driving our weather, then please Google Daily Telegraph and uh, ground squirrels and beavers in the tundra, uh, which the Daily Telegraph has told us in great detail, and this is real, that these poor little animals are causing global warming. So whether that's affecting Scotland or not, Mike, I don't know. On to important things. Uh, we warned uh, over the last 24 hours that BBC was using some of its 3.65 billion budget in order to unleash the Panorama programme to delve into people like ourselves who are trying to report the real news, uh, having got uh, fed up with state propaganda. So let's have a look at the man who's driving the show. Here he is, Cherry Thomas, ex-head of programmes. Now, this is um, an article from The Guardian from last year uh, where the BBC was busy crowing that this man was moving across to take over what was a crumbling Panorama programme. Uh, Panorama having been outpaced, of course, by other channels doing far better investigative work. Uh, but this is uh, what Thomas said. I'm absolutely delighted to be given the opportunity to continue to edit the BBC's greatest investigative program. Panorama is the linchpin of the BBC's current affairs output and its track record is second to none in breaking big and important stories in the best traditions of investigating, uh, investigative journalism. It's an honor to be part of that. And we just say, here is this man, hot from assisting the BBC Savile investigation, uh, he's now unleashing the panorama teams on those who are really exposing child abuse. Well, what sort of man is uh, Cherry Thomas? Let's have a look at him because uh, he's very big on tweeting. And um, we've just highlighted there in the centre his latest comment. How did I, sorry, how I did on Twitter this week? 10 mentions, uh, 16,400 mention reach 29 retweets and he then says how did the rest of you get on so this apparently is the mindset of the man who's supposed to be heading up uh, the most powerful investigative organization for for the bbc but why are we so interested uh, in what's going on well as usual we got it spot on we said uh, that uh, bbc insiders were warning us that there was going to be a massive investigation of the alternative and truth media. Uh, let's just have a look at this. Um, we're gonna keep reminding people of the figures, 3.65 billion pound budget. Uh, uh, what has Panorama done with regard to child abuse? Nothing. Uh, we tweeted out they were going to investigate people. Let's remember Cherry himself. And here it is, Andrea Davidson with a warning on Twitter that Panorama had approached her, as well as Chris, Fre Chris Fay and Bill Maloney, two key people, of course, who've been exposing the sheer scale of child abuse and the fact that it is intimately linked in with the British Parliament in Westminster and the establishment. So if you feel upset about what's going on here, here's the contact page for Panorama. Uh, if you're upset that your license fee money is being used to attack free speech, uh, then perhaps you'd like to contact Panorama. And there's the email panorama.reply at bbc.co.uk. Or alternatively, you can write to them. Uh, will BBC Panorama be investigating this? Uh, we'd like to highlight to people that 
the BBC have been handed explosive evidence of massive corruption across the whole of the political spectrum. Uh, this has been brought to the surface after 13 years investigation by ex RAF warrant officer Gordon Bowden. So if you're not aware of this, do go and Google it and then we can watch with interest to see whether Cherry uh, Thomas and his boys from Panorama are going to investigate the corruption at the heart of government or they're going to stick on investigating truthers. Yeah. Uh, presumably the BBC won't be accurately reporting uh, what's happening uh, with the stoking up of wars in the world, Mike. Uh, no, indeed, uh, because uh, Mr Kerry uh, is now trying to restoke the situation with uh, Syria. Uh, he's saying ultimately a combination of diplomacy and pressure will be needed to bring about a political uh, transition. Military pressure particularly may be necessary given President Assad's reluctance to negotiate uh, seriously. Uh, he's lost any semblance of legitimacy. I'm not sure whether he was talking about Assad or Obama there, but anyway, he's, he's lost any semblance of legitimacy. But we have no higher priority than disrupting and defeating ISIS and other terror networks. So, you know, we're, we're back onto the uh, Syria uh, agenda again. Of course, they're not going to let it go until they've taken control of the country, basically. So. And in the meantime, yeah. King David here uh, talking about uh, Russia and uh, really pretty arrogant, to say the least. Uh, what has he said? Uh, he said that the West needs a tough long term response to Russia over tensions in Ukraine. Uh, and he warned that he and other leaders are prepared to, prepared to take sanctions to a whole different level if Moscow ramps up its aggression. Let's not worry about our aggression. Uh, with more uh, ships in the uh, in the Black Sea and and so on, and he went on to say, if Russia is going to rip up the rule book of the twenty first century and destabilize a sovereign country, then the rest of the world should be prepared to say to Russia, well, you can't rip up one of the, part of the international rule book while still having access to international markets, international finance, international systems. I think Cameron doesn't quite get it. Russia doesn't particularly want access to those things. No, but isn't it classic that Cameron? struts the world stage talking aggression ramping up aggression and whose troops are uh, whose military is he going to commit of course it's going to be american troops so david cameron strutting the world stage uh, of course the deaths and the injuries are principally going to come to american troops if he gets his way yeah well, well and a uh, fascinating article here from the uh, ottawa Cit citizen um because uh, well it's it's on the face of it fairly generic canadian Military predicted Libya would descend into civil war if foreign countries helped overthrow Gaddafi. I think there were many more people than just the Canadian military uh, pointing that out. But there, there were a couple of little snippets in this that I wanted to highlight. Uh, some officers in the Canadian forces tried to raise concerns early on in the war that removing Gaddafi would play into the hands of Islamic extremists. But military sources say that those warnings went unheeded. Later, military members uh, would privately joke about Canada's air force being part of Al-Qaeda's Air Force, since bombing runs helped pave the way for rebel groups aligned to the terrorist group. So, so I mean, what's your thoughts on this uh, and, and what role uh, people within the military who have concerns about the missions that they're being sent on? What, what, what are your thoughts on this? Well, well, I'm going to say that UK Column has increasingly uh, been hearing stories of um, unhappiness within the military. And of course, what seems to be happening is that uh, basically, the alternative media is now getting the real truth across. So, so uh, military personnel are starting to see the background to the deployments. They understand that actually what they're being told through mainstream media in Britain is simply not true, but their, their lives are being put at risk uh, uh, on the basis of lies and propaganda, which is clearly coming from Britain's own government. We know this, this was happening in Afghanistan. Troops on the ground were actually scouring the internet to find out the reality of what was going on and it's happened in other areas uh, including Syria and of course uh, where's the focus of it going to be well I would guess it's going to be with special forces because of course they are now being used as a, as a private army by the likes of the of David Cameron, Miliband and Nick Clegg. Okay, so there was one other little, but if you just bring that one up again, please, Nick. Uh, one other little thing in here, it says, quote, analysts in th with the Department of National Defense in Canada also noted Gaddafi was a staunch ally of the West in the war against Al-Qaeda and Islamic extremism. 
And that was recognised, according to them, in DND reports in 2002, 2003 and 2006, which the Ottawa citizen uh, managed to get hold of through Canadian Freedom of, of Information law. So, so the question in my mind then, Brian, is uh, if analysts with the uh, Department of National Defence in Canada have the view that Gaddafi was a staunch ally of the West in the war against Al-Qaeda, then why would you murder the man? Oh, to destabilise the country and allow it to be drawn into the the general mess, which is uh, North Africa. This is part of, a, I believe, a global agenda. But I mean, it, it implies moving... even more than that. It implies, of course, that, that they wanted Al-Qaeda to, to take hold in Libya. Indeed. Yeah. And then we could say, who is Al-Qaeda? We'll leave that discussion yeah. for another time, I think. Well, if we see the wars being ramped up overseas, perhaps we can uh, um, rest and have confidence in uh, Britain's security services, but apparently that's not the case. Um, thank you very much to the viewer that sent us in this, Mumsnet. Now, if you haven't been on this website before, you need to because it's uh, generating over 70 million page views and over 40 million visits per month. And uh, what is it all about? Well, it's teaching us how to bring up children, make parents' lives easier by pooling knowledge, advice and support. How did they bring up children 400 years ago? Don't know. We try as far as possible to let the conversation flow and not, uh, and not to over-moderate. Mumsnet is a site for grown-ups. Well, this all seems fairly um, lovey and cuddly, uh, but something very strange has happened because uh, MI5 is now suggesting that they should be recruiting from Mumsnet uh, because more mature ladies are needed in order to become spies. Now, we all have to say this quite regularly. This is not UK column just making up humorous fiction. This is the reality. This is accurate. If you're not convinced, have a look at this. Uh, well, here she is. Um, according to the BBC, Ross Myers is a middle-aged spook for MI5. Um, OK, there's a little bit of debate about that. But here's the Mail article. This is a bad job for Mrs. Bond. MI5 wants middle-aged mothers as spies because they understand people better. Uh, well, who's come up with this uh, complete nonsense? Uh, well, let's bring in uh, Labour MP Hazel Blears. She said uh, more women spies were needed. And uh, she went on to say that there was a bit of testosterone in the system. Tickets, money, passport. We all have to get there. And if you've got children, finding 24-hour childcare is often very difficult. Well, she's absolutely right. And uh, UK Column was privileged to meet a couple of Britain's top spies to ask them firsthand just how they managed to cope. So let's bring them up on screen. Here they are, lovely couple, of course. Let's remind ourselves of the uh, male's headline. Um, we need more mature women. Uh, we're going to say what's really going on here is engineered political madness. And this has come, of course, from Marxist New Labour. Do not forget the Miliband brothers, Marxists. And that is what New Labour's about. So we listened in on the conversation. And uh, darling, are you all set for the MI6 Russian assassination job? To which the reply was, oh, Daniel, you just never listen. You know I couldn't get a childminder. They'll just have to wait till Mrs. Pembroke is back at the crash. So there you are. President Putin must be, must be running for cover in the nuclear bunker as he watched utter madness unfold in Britain. This is not accidental. This is communitarian political correctness designed to literally destroy the country. Well, what's the antidote? Uh, you should keep watching the British, uh, British Constitution Group videos and feel McConnell from Able Danger America, very much on our wavelength, warning about uh, what should really be, uh, what we should really be focused on and the dangers of the common purpose between uh, David Cameron and Bibi Obama. Yeah, so uh, no technical problems today. So he will be uh, on, the, on the live stream immediately after this, uh, after this program's finished at uh, about 13.30 this afternoon. And again, after the nine o'clock repeat uh, at about uh, half past nine. Excellent. UKcolumn.org slash live. Excellent. Well, at this point, we're going to uh, shift our focus north of the border. Uh, we've got David Scott, our Northern Exposure reporter, is going to be joining us. 
and uh, we're going to start off with just a reminder to you of uh, Robert Green who uh, was in Aberdeen Court on Wednesday. Uh, what happened to him? Let's bring it up very quickly. Uh, he was given 250 hours community service over two years and gagged for life for mentioning anything to do with the Holly Gregg case. Not only that, he's not allowed to mention any other child abuse case in uh, Scotland, uh, even if a child comes to him with uh, uh, stories of abuse. So this is a worldwide gag by the Scottish ju judiciary. Um, and uh, he was also denied right of appeal, although we understand that was a decision made by one judge, which is actually unlawful because two are required to make that decision. Um, we'll hand over now to uh, David Scott, if you're there. Hi, good afternoon, Brian. Good afternoon, Nick. How are you doing? Uh, we're doing very well. I'm sorry that you're suffering uh, grey gray and overcast there, but... Um, kick off with where you like. Uh, um, the situation around Robert Green is extraordinary. Obviously, Robert can't say anything himself, otherwise he goes to prison. What do you make of his sentence? It, it is quite extraordinary. The, the sentence, it was a strange day because the sentence was really the best we could possibly have hoped for uh, on that day and, and in that venue. Um, but the overall process that Robert has been through is, is, is enormously unsatisfactory. The, the sentence, as you mentioned, is 250 hours uh, of unpaid work. Now, you, you know how public spirited Robert is and how much unpaid work he does in the community anyway. Th this is not really a, too much of an imposition on someone like Robert. But you have to remember that that's in addition to 96 days on remand, which is equivalent to a 192 day sentence. And it's in addition to eight months of house arrest, no internet, reporting to the police every day. So the, 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 the cumulative effect of this is, is very great. The matters as they were uh, concluded in the court on, on Wednesday um, were, were satisfactory as far as they went. But the, the statements that were made by Robert's own, own counsel to, to persuade the court uh, not to impose a prison sentence, which was being considered, uh, basically stated that um, you know Robert now accepted that he he had to retire from the campaign and and never essentially never mention the words Holly Gregg again. He can't speak out on any aspect of the case. He can't. Um, the his his advocate said that he is allowed technically to to discuss. Holly Gregg in his own living room in a private conversation in Warrington, but his advocate would advise against doing even that. If he speaks out publicly in any way, even making uh, you know tangential references to to the case, he could find himself arrested and, and and back in prison in Scotland in a heartbeat. You have to remember that this is a uh, in response to the non-harassment order placed upon him in the Stonehaven trial in 2012. That non-harassment order names 15 individuals and Robert's understanding had been that he wasn't harassing them because he hadn't contacted them, he hadn't had any communication with them, he hadn't tried to intimidate them, no phone calls, no visits, no nothing. But he was blogging about the case in general. And that blogging from his base in England has been deemed to be a crime in Scotland, has de been deemed to contravene the non-harassment order in Scotland. And uh, Roberts uh, suffered as a result. So he's now completely gagged, and that gag is lifelong, it would appear, appear with no further appeal, certainly no route of appeal open in Scotland. And it uh, applies to the whole of the planet. This is a massive attack on free speech, David. It, it is. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's ludicrous. It's, it's a ridiculous attack on free speech. If Robert goes to Tahiti and sits on the beach and someone recognises him and says... You're Robert Green. You campaigned for that, that wee lassie in Aberdeen, Holly Gregg. And, and he says yes and engages in a two-minute conversation. He could be arrested. It, it's ridiculous. It's, it's an, absolutely an attack on free speech. It goes beyond, way beyond anything that anti-harassment legislation was meant to do. This is, this is legislation that was brought in where, you know, somebody would fall out with their boyfriend or girlfriend and was going around and yelling through letterboxes and making, you know, threats. And that, that type of anti-social nasty behaviour. Robert's done nothing of that sort. He's been, he's been 
conducting a campaign about the rule of law in Scotland. He's not contacted the people that he's meant to not harass, and this this legislation has been used to silence him. Let, let's let's be clear. Uh, David, for for me, this this sentence actually, I'm going to say, is very useful in that it is so draconian. All it for me, it's doing is that the uh, the Scottish establishment is rubber stamping that they are absolutely terrified of the subject of uh, child abuse. They're terrified of the Holly Gregg case. Uh, let's remember that Alex Salmon's office lost or destroyed documents. They were prepared to go against the information commissioner and break the law in order to not provide documents. Uh, we've had Eilish Angelini, the former procurator fiscal, uh, her role not clear. And uh, then, of course, she used Peter Watson from Levy McRae's solicitors, uh, law firm rather, who is himself under investigation at the moment. She used him to threaten other people, including the UK column. So the, I think this sentence really has stamped on this case. Anybody had any doubt of the, the veracity of the Holly Gregg case, uh, the sentence from that Aberdeen court has now shown the world, Scottish establishment, what are they really terrified of? Child abuse. And there's, there's, got, to be, there's got to be something there. Well, let's just move on because, of course, these are the men controlling Scotland. Uh, but there's some worrying news uh, in the mail today. It says that the fact that uh, the SNP could take 56 out of 59 seats in Scotland would mean that they held the balance of power in England. And the mail is saying what a terrifying uh, um, situation that we could have people like Alex Salmon, who's been deposed effectively, but he now comes in as a privy councillor and starts to take control of uh, us good folks in England. Yes, th this is not something that you really want to be queuing up for. Uh, the, the, the phrase be afraid, be very afraid does, does come to mind. The, the nationalist government is becoming embroiled in, in controversy after controversy and they all have a similar theme. And the theme is loss of liberty for the people of Scotland. We have armed police, which we'll come to. We have name person. We have ID cards. We have all sorts of, 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 of moves, none of which are pro liberty. All of which are are, are, big, are bringing in a, a controlling and collectivist state. Um, and this is not something you want in your lives down in England. Um, and by a quirk of the Scottish political system, where we have a four-party system: Lib Dems, Labour. Uh, nationalists and conservatives, maybe even a five-party system with with UKIP, who who have um, an MEP from Scotland. The this the votes are so subdivided. You need a relatively small percentage of the Scottish electorate to get a barrel load of seats, and that was favouring the Labour Party, and it looks like it's going to flip in favour of the Nationalists now, and uh, this is going to have a huge effect, disproportionate effect on the the politics of the whole United Kingdom. Right. Well, um, David, you've um, kindly pointed us at the direction of some uh, news items from Scotland, which we think that English viewers really need to pay attention. Uh, here we've got from the Scottish government site, we've got the Early Years Collaborative, a coalition of communi community planning partners, including social services, health, education, police and third, uh, third sector professionals, committed to ensuring that every baby, child, mother, father and family in Scotland has access to the best supports available. Uh, well, this is very spooky stuff. If you get into the uh, documentation, it's talking about more cognitive stimulation. It's talking about developing the brains of children. And this, of course, is locking a whole range of uh, public um, and, and indeed charity type organisations around the family. Uh, what do you make of this one? Yes, this is, this is state, uh, state mandated parenting. Um, the, the implications that seem to be on display here is that the, is that the children belong first and foremost to the state. Um, if the children aren't brought up properly, there will be a burden upon the state. They will use um, welfare and health services to a too great an extent, they will not contribute enough and therefore the state seems to have a right to um, change how they're being brought up. As if the state knows anything about it, as if 
as if the dynamic within families isn't isn't much more subtle and much richer than any state functionally is ever going to grasp. Um, and we're seeing a lot of this this intervention. It's extremely worrying. Yeah, so the state is closing in around families. So you're talking about the Scottish state owning children. This is this is something straight out of Nazi Germany. Um, but uh, then it gets worse. We've got here the Daily Record uh, reporting that uh, despite uh, Sir Stephen House, the boss of Police Scotland, remember Scotland's got a single police force, he said, well, OK, uh, we've been a bit naughty. We've put armed uh, uh, officers on the streets. Uh, we're going to withdraw them. Uh, politicians are now saying they're outraged when the figures came out from October uh, that this hasn't stopped. And uh, so here we've got one single police force in Scotland, unaccountable to, the, sorry, accountable to just one section of society. That is the, uh, the SNP judicial cabal. And now they're putting armed police out on the streets. What, what's your comment on this? This is getting a lot of rage in Scotland. I, I, I attended a public meeting during the uh, referendum campaign. And I've, in Scotland, you don't seem you don't get much sort of public shows of emotion. It's, it's not that sort of country. It's very reserved. And there was a lot of anger being directed against the then uh, Secretary McCaskill over the uh, armed police initiative and the fact that there was these officers roaming the, roaming the country with guns. Uh, this is not something that, this, that Scotland is taking well to. It's a, it's a peaceful nation. Armed crime and, 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 and violence is falling. There's no need for this. Um, and there seems to be a lot of lies being told by uh, Commissioner House to, um, to Parliament about this. And there's a lot of anger in the press. I've got a few uh, papers from today. The Times Scotland armed police at pub fights despite the Chief's pledge. The Scotsman... Police in new rows over gun patrols and the Scottish Daily Mail armed police still out on routine jobs. So if you're pulled over um, because you're driving erratically uh, in Scotland, it might be an armed officer that's pulling you over. So uh, I would suggest that you do exactly as you're told. Uh, that's it, isn't it? Now, let's just, if we may, bring that one back on screen, because, of course, the other item that's coming in that you've warned us about is ID cards by, uh, by stealth in Scotland. Uh, let's go on to the Scottish Daily Mail here. We've got SMP plan to share NHS data, uh, which is being described as illegal. And this one, which was just incredible, NHS Scotland secret US takeover revealed. So we're now coming into the money element that we're seeing political change actually being funded through massive global financial power. Um, if you'll just uh, summarise this and then we'll move on to Mike and uh, World Finance. Yes, it, the, the state is becoming ever more tightly um, unified in Scotland. The, the health service, social services, police they're, they're all being tied up. They're being tied up with access to a central database so that everything about you and yours is going to be known. And then this information and all the tax money that supports it is, is being um, used in, in some cases to, uh, to commission uh, work from external private companies. Um, the private companies are one thing, but the, the, the state um, intrusion into family life and into individual liberty is, is really very worrying. It's getting worse every day. And I'm pleased to say there is some, some resistance starting to be shown and some realisation in Scotland for just how bad it is. Um, the position, for example, of Chief Constable uh, Sir Stephen House is now uh, very rocky. It's so bad, in fact, that Nicola Sturgeon gave him a vote of confidence. So... Uh, he might not last a month. OK, thanks very much for that. Over to you, Mike, on uh, big money. Yeah, OK. So today, uh, in fact, sorry, Monday, uh, we'll see the uh, the new European Central Bank uh, bank bailout scheme start with £60 billion Euros of uh, toxic assets bought from the uh, European banks. And this is part of a €1.1 trillion Euro, uh, quantitative easing programme, which is going to last... For 18 months or so um, now, uh, sorry, until September 2016. Um, so Mario Draghi uh, really excited about this. He says that uh, um, that it's going to support the economy, uh, but of course, it isn't going to do that at all. It's going to support the the banks who are suffering, uh, and uh, 
Uh, Greece, of course, is being left out of this programme. Just, we'll just point out that this is 1.1 trillion euros of quantitative easing. Greece being left out of the programme, it doesn't have an agreement uh, and therefore it's, not, it's only going to be ac allowed access to the emergency liquidity assistance, which is much more expensive than this. So Greek banks don't get access. Uh, and Draghi said right now the ECB cannot buy Greek bonds uh, if certain conditions are in place as far as economic policy is concerned. In other words, if they start killing some more people, uh, that would make the governing council think that, it's, uh, that in some time from now bonds would again be eligible. And of course Cyprus uh, is also excluded, um, so they're in the same boat. Uh, they're considered not in compliance with the demands of the uh, Troika, which is the European Central Bank, the IMF and the EU. Um, now, an interesting story uh, that we missed from last week that I wanted to draw to your attention, uh, and that is a, a fire that happened early, to, I think it was February 2014, uh, in Argentina at uh, one of Iron Mountain's secure uh, facilities has now been decided that that is arson following a year-long uh, investigation. Uh, they call it a layer-by-layer layer investigation. They found traces of flammable su substances uh, and it's now been shown that the fire starting point was caused by devices placed to that effect given that pieces of conductors and electrical transformers were found in the area uh, and did not correspond to equipment in the area. So uh, who's whose effects or whose documents were damaged by this? Well, of course, HSBC. Uh, and HSBC in, in Argentina has been accused of tax fraud, tax evasion and money laundering. Uh, and, uh, and in fact, uh, Iron Mountain themselves are part of this money laundering uh, uh, exercise uh, uh, along with JP Morgan and BNP Paribas are accused. Uh, and uh, just lots of documents dis disappearing as a result of this fire. But of course, Iron, Martin, Iron Mountain has a bit of a history of this. So here's uh, an article from the BBC in 2006 uh, talking about uh, a similar fire uh, in an Iron Mountain installation in London. And I believe this is the fire that uh, destroyed the Cook Report tapes that Ben Fellows was talking yeah. about. Child abuse, yeah. Best it, uh, best it gets destroyed. Indeed. Yeah. Uh, and also in this article, they're pointing out that on the very day that this fire uh, was started in London, there was a similar fire in Ottawa and Canada. Uh, and coincidence, just coincidence, that'll yeah, be. Yeah, yeah. And, and it gets better uh, because uh, many people reporting that in 2011 then there was a fire at another Iron Mountain facility in Aprilia in Italy. So... Uh, they're a very unlucky company. Yeah, and, it, and also the decept is deceptive, aren't they? Because they're calling it Iron Mountain. If it was iron, it wouldn't burn. And clearly they're using flammable materials. Surely the Twin Towers has disproved that. Yeah. yeah. Okay, moving on. Uh, life expectancy. Um, this is a pretty incredible story. These are statistics out from the uh, Office for National Statistics today. Um, basically showing, well, in fact, many of the newspapers were reporting this uh, the 18-year gap in active lifespan between richest and poorest in modern Britain is worse than Rwanda. That, I think uh, it was The Guardian was saying that. Um, so uh, what did the UNS have to say on this? They said males in the most deprived areas can expect to live 52.2 years in good health compared to males with, in the least deprived areas who can expect to live 70.5 years in good health. So in other words, you'll be healthy until you're 70 if you're well off. If you're badly off, you're lucky if you make it to 55. Uh, similarly for, for females uh, and similarly for life expectancy uh, as a whole. And uh, really uh, shocking statistics that most of the media have picked up on because, uh, because really it puts us on a par for certain sections of society, puts us on a par with third world countries uh, and really demonstrates the collapse that, that we have already um, witnessed in this country, never mind what's coming as a result of the great uh, long-term economic disaster. Can't really okay. say any more than Can't that. Can't say any more. You know. Well, we're going to leave people with a couple of thoughts over the weekend. I'm going to bring this uh, slide back up. This is the state of Britain's government sniggering and laughing over the subject of child abuse. And of course, as we pointed out, the big propaganda scam by David Cameron's uh, conservative Lib Dem government is that the child abusers are all Asian and Muslim. The reality, of course, is that the, the rings are being led by white uh, abusers, both male and female. The rings include white abusers. And uh, what they're trying to do here is to slide public opinion to blaming the Muslim Asian community, leaving the politicians involved in child abuse and the establishment figures involved in 
child abuse to go scot-free. So our, our caption was, it's work to treat, blame the Muslims for paedophilia and all the heat is off. Leon Britton, Elm Guesthouse, Savile and Westminster. Great work by the BBC too. The public, I just love them. And I think what Nick Clegg is laughing about is he thinks he's able to pull the wool over the public's eyes. So don't give in to this sheer nonsense. This is divide and rule. This wicked government that we have would like nothing better than to have violence on the street uh, between any group it can. The real danger is that we are being run by a paedophilic British uh, government and establishment. And um, we encourage you, if you've got some time over the weekend, do get your noses, please, into UK Column website. There are many historic uh, articles there in, in our archives, which are even more relevant today than they were. And of course, you can have a look at um, uh, some of the other video material. Um, we are having a look at the website at the moment, so expect to see some changes in the future. Uh, but please, uh, if you are having a look at UK Column, encourage other people to. And we desperately need um, assistance within bringing in more people for subscriptions and donations. If you like what we do, we need your help to keep us going. Uh, last comment from north of the border. I just have one question for David Scott. And that is, is it um, easier for the police to draw their weapons in Scotland from under the kilt? Well, you um, probably wouldn't get a policeman wearing a kilt. They're quite heavily armoured. They're, they're very military looking. Uh, we have, um, I think, 200 and odd uh, armed officers on patrol and a similar number also trained. So we can, Police Scotland can put an army of, of 500 into the field, uh, all, all, all fully equipped. So um, I don't know if that makes you feel any safer. It doesn't make me feel safer. Uh, two quick comments. One, um, rule in England by Scots. Um, th there are two different types of Scottish rule. Um, you've, you've experienced one sort with Gordon Brown. This is not good. This is uh, horribly incompetent and they'll sell all your gold reserves and um, really no, you know, just, just basically spend the money like it's going out of fashion. That's, that's quite a new thing. Traditional Scottish rule was the sort of thing that Cowperthwaite did in um, in Hong Kong, he was a Scottish accountant that ran the place, did it very well. Every time someone said, I want a bailout, I want some money, he said no. That's that's how it should be done, but I don't think that's on offer with Alex Salmon. And one final word, um, mum's net uh, not being over-moderated. Well, a um, friend of mine who is a mum, I was on mum's net and was wanting to discuss the named person scheme in Scotland and its fascist tendencies. Uh, that was very rapidly moderated and was in fact closed down. Okay, well, David, thanks very much for that. Uh, that's uh, the end of our news today. Do have a think about all of the points we're talking about, and of course, spread the word. And uh, if you're interested in Cherry Thomas and uh, Panorama, um, make contact and ask them what they're up to. Any announcements? Uh, not at the moment. Not at the moment. Oh, oh yeah, there is one announcement actually. Uh, we're going to, at 6 p.m., which is the normal Doom Watch slot tonight, we're going to play out one of the Doom Watches from the conference. So, so sorry, I forgot about that. I should have mentioned it earlier. Excellent. Yep. Okay, that's it. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you same time on Monday. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.